I'm gonna show you what the bunny rabbit put into my pots. <laughs> Happy Easter if you're celebrating. Thank you so much for being here. Look at this bowl of spring goodness bursting into life a couple of weeks ago. Stick around. And look at it now. Ah, the key being, a couple of weeks ago, there have been developments. Welcome to the patio on a beautiful spring day here in southern Spain. This is my bowl of Blatia striata and Blatia albostriata, given to me by Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. Thank you so, so much, Fernanda, for this. Now maybe you can see what I was trying to achieve here, putting all the blatillas into one bowl so eventually it'll fill up and give me a little bit of a spectacle every spring. And it would appear that Blatia striata is a little bit slow out of the gates. However, seeing as these blatillas are first-time bloomers for me, I am not familiar with the duration, the longevity of the blooms, and for that reason I am filming this even though my Blatia striata buds have not opened fully. I just don't want to lose the Ibostriata blooms, which would then be just spikes when the Blatia striata actually opens. I wanted to show that there is a semblance of what I envisioned back in the day. I thought, put them all into one bowl. Meanwhile, also a necessity because space on the patio is relatively limited when it comes to warmer temperatures where I cannot really find enough shade to ensure that the leaves don't burn and frazzle on me. And it's starting already to some degree. That's why she's only in full sun right now, even though it's somewhat cool in the air because of filming. Normally, I try to keep her as shaded as possible. The patio is super bright. I've got reflection everywhere, so light is not an issue. I would like to try and save the visual aspect <laughs> to a certain degree, even after she has bloomed out. It took a while to get these to bloom, but it was well worth the wait. I have learned a lot since then. And what surprises me is that some growths are bigger than others, and yet they don't feature any spikes. We will enjoy what we've got, and I have to say I'm really enjoying what I've got. Being a first-time bloomer, my Alba Striata, I was thinking, are you going to open up fully? Do you stay cupped? I've then since checked on the internet, and some blooms are open wide and some are not. I don't know if I should put that down to being a first-time bloomer, but I managed to get some images that display the beautiful characteristics of the blooms. They are extremely delicate. Oh, but they are so sparkly. It's right up my street. They've also got so much interest on the lip. It reminds me of my Rapiculus Lelias. So this orchid being a ground orchid is really coming onto her own. And not only just because the foliage has this kind of a palm, you know, seedling palm tree kind of foliage, but the whole thing put together just makes for a beautiful little display. So I'm hoping that next year we're going to see a little bit more, a little bit more abundance from what's coming next, because it is quite surprising, once again to me, that... This new growth right here is enormous. It's the Blatia striata. The Alba striata is variegated. So this enormous growth right here has no spike. That is super surprising, and yet we have a smaller growth in the back here, and it has a bud. Very interesting. So the blooms of the Alba striata had a really weird little thing going on, and I thought maybe because it got a little bit too hot too soon, but the buds would open and then they would close at night, and then I thought I'd already had lost some buds. That's not the case. The next day they stayed closed, the next day they would open a little bit. It's a very strange little habit that these blooms have, maybe as a result of being a first-time bloomer, but either way, I got the Blatia striatas to bloom, that makes me super happy because when you get gifted orchids, it's always a challenge. You don't want to lose them. You don't want to destroy them. You want to treat them super nice so that the person who entrusted them to you <laughs> doesn't feel like they've made a big mistake. So, Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents, Blitia striata and Blitia albostriata in bloom on the patio of Ninja Orchids. Thank you so much for these beauties. I'm going to put up a community post once the Blatia striata opens up fully. That way you will be able to see the blooms in more detail. 
Coming up next is a clip that I did on an overcast day, which was just as well because we can appreciate another first time bloomer on the patio. But before I insert that clip, look at this, what I am seeing here. This is a color combination I absolutely adore. The beautiful, deep, rich burgundy paired with a very bright orange of my Lelia Harpophila that is blooming for blooms at the moment. So I'm gonna put in the clip right now of my Patricia van Puyenbroek. And then I have some other blooms that I want to show you, not necessarily first time bloomers, but oh, it's Easter. And these are my Easter blooms. So here she is. I have other shots that I took on a sunny day, but this is actually very, very ideal to film this clip today while it's overcast because I don't have to explain the colors as much. I have some richer colors while there was sunshine, but we are almost, almost true, true color that we have for this gorgeous little bloom. The images that I'll be showing you also show you the depth and the richness and the details of the bloom because, yep, she's not big. Now, I wasn't expecting big blooms, but I didn't look up any images on the internet to know what I'm up against with this orchid. So when she bloomed, I was delighted. This color is just so up my alley and really, as far as I'm concerned, bring on orchids with this color. Love it. Her fragrance also is very similar to a berry odor, but it's not as heavy as a berry odor. Now, granted, a berry odor comes with hundreds of blooms, so maybe that's why the fragrance is so, so much more potent. I only have two blooms on my Patricia van Puyenbroek. If she were to bloom hundreds of blooms, the fragrance would probably be just as intense, but she's sweeter. I find that if she were in a closed room next to the berry odor, a berry odor in a closed room could actually become a little bit too invasive for some people who are sensitive to very strong fragrances. She wouldn't, but you have to get very close to her to appreciate the fragrance. So my goodness, the color is up my alley and I've got a fragrance. I never expected that. Very, very pleased. So let me tell you why I'm questioning I only have two blooms, because she is vigorous. She wanted to bloom for me even last year, 2021, 2022. So that's the spike from last year. I've already cut off the spikes from this year. So I had two spikes trying to bloom and they just didn't. They never manifested themselves, which was the strangest thing ever. They only ever just dried up. There were no buds. It was like an empty spike. So bizarre. And then here, oh yeah, and no, it had nothing to do with whatever little pest I had on the patio that was chewing up other things. This was completely different. It, the spike was fine, but there were no buds on them. Promise you, I promise you, I have been watching this orchid very closely since I saw the next set of spikes coming because I had the same situation last year. Now you may say, what is all this spotting going on here? The answer is, I have no clue. Absolutely no clue. I treat her with garlic alcohol, treated her with insecticidal soap. So we have a dendrobium, then you put something industrial on her, let's say insecticidal soap and maybe the soap was something she didn't appreciate. So I'm not gonna be touching her, being a dendrobium with anything else in the future but garlic alcohol. I would say it's cold damage for lack of anything else that I can draw a conclusion from. I really don't know. Losing a couple of leaves on the old growth is not the issue, but I have to say that's why I'm so proud that I managed two blooms and hence my excitement. <laughs> I know she can do more and we'll be working on that and then we'll figure things out moving forward. But oh my goodness, drum roll. Just now when I turned the pot, I saw a first new growth. I don't know if you can see that in the camera right there. Fantastic. That's awesome news. That means other new growth should be on the way very soon. What I'm really looking for is a new growth on this cane because I broke this cane off when I cleaned her up and put her into lava rock and self-watering. Yeah, so this is an independent cane right here. <laughs> that grows a new growth, we get new roots and we'll be back in business. Meanwhile, it's never desiccated. So somewhere there is an attachment or maybe there is a root somewhere that is functioning that I am unaware of. Anyway, introducing to you my Patricia van Puyenbroek. She is charming, adorable, intricate, gorgeous with the spotting, 
The lip is just amazing. I love that the petals are just like little arms. Hello, pick me up kind of arms. So, so sweet. So those were my first time bloomers that the Easter Bunny brought me this year in 2023. Now I'm moving on to show you what other Easter blooms the Easter Bunny brought me that are not first time bloomers, but oh, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna wait. I'm just gonna show them to you. These are my nobilies. A complex hybrid on the left. I don't have an ID for her, but on the right is the Nobili variety Cooksonianum. Don't they just look magical? Oh, and if I could share you the fragrance of my No ID Dendrobium. Let me see, let me see if you like freesias. That would be the exact fragrance that my Nobili exudes and it is relatively potent, I have to say. Doesn't matter, she lives outside. Isn't headache inducing for me, but <laughs> I love this orchid. <laughs> she was the first Nobili that I brought into the collection here in 2018. And boy, we have been through a few things with all her keikis and everything, but now we've got her up and running and it took all of three years for her to get her grow on here on the patio. And this is what she does for me every year. It's just ooh, so up my street with the colors of white and a blush of pink and freesia fragrance. Yum, yum, yum. Very spring-like, very Easter-like. But on the right, I think that uh, my Cooksonianum is being drowned out or smelled out by the fragrance of the No ID. Because she last year had a bit of a rose fragrance. It wasn't very obvious, very evident to me. And this year I'm getting nothing out of her. Hmm, que raro, I would only have to say to that. Now, she has bloomed beautifully. <laughs> I'm missing six blooms because a slug ate the buds off the top here. While they were still nubbins, the spikes, and then something came, a beetle or a slug or something, came at night from the hedge and, well, had a midnight snack to which, ugh, yeah, very frustrating. It is a beautiful display nonetheless, but when you know in the back of your mind what could have been, <laughs> I know, I'm being greedy. Anyway, my Cooksonianum was also a gift from Fernanda Nathimento Orchids and Succulents. Again, hi, Fernanda, doing well here. And on top of that, she is growing two new growths already. I'm kind of hoping maybe that this year she'll come out with three for me. Maybe I'm being a bit greedy here, but... I'll take two. She started one new growth when I moved her away from the hedge, but since then she's picked up speed and we have now got another new growth coming, so maybe there could be a third. Who knows? My nobly no ID. Meanwhile, I can't count. There's too much going on at the base. It's too tight for me to really have a good look-see. I have seen four already. Um, yeah, because it's also a cluster of keikis from back in the day. Who knows if they're going to establish themselves this year now to become full-grown orchids with canes that match the mother plant. I don't know. But what you see growing here on the right is actually the growth from the keikis. And they're sort of half the size of the mother plant cane off of which they came. But still, we are really, really packing in the pot with the keikis. Whoa, look at that bumblebee. Ooh. See how quickly it, oh, it's huge. And it's gone. I was just about to say, please don't pollinate my blooms. I want to enjoy them <laughs> for as long as possible. But... If we do now see a bloom collapse, we will know the parents <laughs> because the bumblebee landed there and moved to there. So if something starts to collapse over here, ta-da, we have just witnessed something. <laughs> what a huge thing that was, and it was really black. Anywho, talk about being video bombed, huh? <laughs> Spring is in the air, even for everything that's flying around. <laughs> Love it. But would you indulge me? Just, just one, one, one more, just one more. Um, I promise I'm not going to go through the entire blooming collection. It's Easter. It's just, it's a special day. So <laughs> just indulge me. I've got one more I want to show you. I hope you stayed and I hope you're glad you stayed because this is my Ancelia Africana Buffalo crossed with Leo. She is a first time bloomer for me, even though I did feature her in another video along with Adelanati. I 
but I only had three blooms open and I just wasn't sure if the conditions were going to hold up or if I was going to break the spike, seeing as I'm still bringing this orchid in and out. Was I going to lose buds? All of that. And I didn't. I didn't lose any buds. Oh, she is so beautiful. <laughs> I don't know about you, but yes, this is the main spike. I have a second spike on a second growth, which I will show you shortly, but I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Even if you don't like her, all our tastes are different, but there's a certain thing about orchids, especially when the names match, that when they then bloom and do not disappoint, it's like, oh, I can, I can actually say, I love this orchid, instead of saying, I'm gonna get used to the bloom, you know what I mean? Now, they're a little bit more on the orangey side in the viewfinder, whereas the blotches in real life, let's see if I reduce the exposure, if we can get there, see what happens. Nope, still too orange. But let me just say, in real life, the blotches are more brown, a little bit richer, not that shiny, not that exposed, let's just say. Still, I like what I see in the viewfinder. Now I look forward to seeing other Ancelia Africanas bloom and start comparing the blooms, the shapes. Are they more star-shaped, more open? I can assure you I was not expecting a first-time bloomer to branch so here we have four blooms on a branch, which, wow, just gives me a lot of hope and a lot of anticipation and expectation for this orchid. And the spike that had the wherewithal to bend towards the main source of light while this orchid was developing the spikes indoors. So glad I didn't go and break it on top of everything else that could have gone wrong this season and has gone wrong. But here's the second spike. Not as many blooms as the first one, but still gorgeous nonetheless. Incredible. Her fragrance is very, very dusty. It is a very warm fragrance. And then a note of sweetness comes through right at the end. Fantastic. It's not powerful. It's not overbearing. It just, <laughs> if I may say, it commands respect, admiration, and awe. These are the Easter blooms I wanted to share with you, what I see on my patio, what is giving me great pleasure on this Easter holiday. If you celebrate once again, happy Easter to you and your loved ones. If you don't celebrate, either way, watching this video, I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed filming it. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.